Have you ever wanted to access your home network while traveling? Or map your NAS share while not at home? Have you ever wondered about easy and secure management access for your networking equipment? Or setting up a gaming network with friends? You will say, easy. I will just provision a VPN like WireGuard, IPsec, OpenVPN on my home router, and then dial in from my mobile device or laptop while on the go. What if you don't have a static public IP, or your router is managed by the ISP that does not allow you to change its configuration or set up port forwarding? Okay then, I will just buy a commercial VPN product. But in such case, all your traffic will go through some third-party servers that will increase latency and potentially allow the third party to see your data. Luckily, there is another way. It's called Zero Tier. This solution combines SD1 and VPN technology. It's super easy to use and set up, but most of all, it has a free tier. Today, I'd like to show you how it works, how to set it up, and some of its features. My name is Philip. Let's dive right in. This time I will reverse the order and start with the actual setup and explain the concepts later in the video. Please bear with me. It will all start to make sense very soon. First, let's go to my.zerotier.com and sign in. This is called a controller. That's like a central registry that stores and distributes network configuration to all connected devices. It also authorizes devices to join the network and issue certificates. Let's create a new network. You can have as many network as you like, but for non-commercial use, you are limited to 25 authorized devices. Let's select the network to perform initial configuration. First, there's the network ID. It uniquely identifies your network in the whole zero tier universe. We'll use that ID to join nodes to our network. Then there's the network name. You can set it up to your liking and also change it in the future, but make it something meaningful because if you'll have a node that belongs to multiple networks, at least you'll know which network is which. Let's set it to our first network. Networks can be private or public. A public network is a network that anyone can join just by knowing the network ID. In order to join a private network, apart from the network ID, the administrator needs to authorize the joining request. Of course, we want the network to be private. Let's skip the Manage Routes section, we'll talk about it in a different video, and go directly to IPv4 address assignment. This is like a DHCP for your network that gives out the IP addresses. In easy mode, you just select the desired network addressing scheme from the ones on the list. Just make sure it does not overlap with your local network. You can select an advanced option and manually assign a range of addresses or even disable IPv4 altogether if you plan IPv6 only setup. I will go back to easy selection and pick the first range from the list. Mind that the routing table has been automatically adjusted to accommodate our network range. That's it. Your control plane is ready. Few things to mention. If you don't want to use the provided controller, then you can host the controller on your own machine. Uh, second thing is, your network can function without a controller in limited capacity. Of course, to add or bootstrap a node, you'll need a controller as during boot, the nodes contact the controller to fetch the configuration. But once your nodes are up and running, they can work off cached configuration. With our controller in place, let's add our first node. Zero Tier has their software available for most of the platforms, including Linux, Windows, Mac OS, Microtik, Android, iOS, and few others. 
will work with a new Ubuntu host. I will run the following one liner. It did add the zero tier software repository as well as started zero tier service. Upon first start, our node generated a private public key pair. Keys are used to prove node's identity and also decrypt the traffic targeted to the node. Important thing to mention is that you are in control of those keys, so no one can decrypt the traffic but the recipient. Node will be assigned a 10-digit address that uniquely identifies it on the zero-tier network. The address is derived from the public key and is crucial for establishing secure communication channels between devices with the zero-tier network. Devices use those addresses to find and connect with each other. At first, the node starts with no direct links to any other node except connection to root servers operated by zero tier. Uh, root servers help devices find each other on the network. When a device joins a zero tier network, it communicates with the root servers to advertise its presence and obtain information about other connected devices. So, the primary purpose of root servers is peer discovery. Root servers know about every zero-tier node connected to the network. If we look at the output of Pierce command, there's the 10-digit zero-tier address of the server. Its role, planet, means that those are the main root servers. Then we have latency in milliseconds. Zero-tier root servers are spread across the world in a way that at least one server should be under 100 milliseconds away no matter where you connect from. Then there's the connection type. Direct means we are directly connected. Then there's the last activity, and finally the IP address and port of the peer. Uh, there are four main planet-wide root servers accessible both via IPv4 and IPv6. Let's join our first network. I will go to the controller, and copy the network ID. Then execute a zero tier join command and provide the network ID from the previous step. What happened is our node sent a network discovery message to the root servers that it wants to join the network with this particular ID. Root servers check their internal database to find which controller is handling this specific network. Root servers will then reply back to the node, informing it about the zero-tier address of the controller. Node will try reaching the controller to authenticate itself. Let's issue list network command to see the networks our system belongs to. Here's the network ID, interface name, and MAC address. There's also a message that the access to this network is denied. One thing to mention is that our node got a new interface. Also, if we list peers, that is, devices we communicate with, we'll discover a new entry. That's our controller. Mind that the role for that peer is leaf. Leaf does not mean it's a controller. Leaf means a node that is directly connected. In our case, the controller is also a leaf, as it's directly connected. Next step is to admit the node to the network. Let's go to our controller and scroll down to the Members section. There's our node 1. Let's approve the request to join this network. Controller did assign an IP address on the network. We can override it if needed. Let's name our node so it's easier to identify. If we go back to the nodes and show the network it belongs to with list network command, we'll discover the network name, a status has changed from permission denied to OK, and an IP address has been assigned. What actually happened is the node authenticated itself to the controller and the controller sent the network configuration to the node. Let me log in to node 2, that's in the same LAN as node 1, and try joining our network. I have the zero-tier software already installed. As expected, we are not authorized. 
I will go to controller and approve the joining request, uh, providing a node to name. If we list the networks we belong to, we'll see the status is now OK and an IP address has been assigned. Let's try pinging node 1 via the zero tier IP. Works. We've connected two nodes with just a few commands. We did not have to provide any IPs, passwords or keys. You will say, I will run a commercial VPN solution on two nodes and it's equally easy to set up. But look at this. The round trip between our nodes is just two milliseconds. That would indicate that our nodes are on the same local network. If we list peers, we'll discover that node 1 and node 2 are indeed directly connected. Let's capture the traffic on the zero tier interface and run ping again. We see regular ICMP traffic. If we capture traffic on the Ethernet interface, we discover encrypted UDP data coming from within our local network. The traffic is not routed over any intermediary server, but the nodes are directly talking to each other. Zero tier dynamically builds a peer-to-peer -peer network. It's not difficult if both nodes are on the same link. Let's go one step further. This time I will go to a server that's in a different network. Let's issue zero tier join command. Now let me authorize the request on the controller. I will name the member server1. This time the physical IP is different. Server1 is sitting behind a different firewall than node1 and node2. It's part of a different network. Let's try pinging our newly joined server from node1. I will grab its IP and execute the ping command. Works. The server is 20 milliseconds away. Let's check if the traffic between node 1 and server 1 flows directly in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion. I will run a traffic dump on node 1, but this time I will be looking for UDP packets from the firewall that server 1 is sitting behind. Here we go. Node 1 talks directly to the firewall of server 1. Let's dump the traffic on server 1. Same thing it talks directly to firewall of node 1. Indeed, node 1 and server 1 are communicating with each other directly. If we execute the Pierce command that tells us nodes we communicate with, we see the public IP of server 1 and the public IP of node 1. But how is that possible? None of our nodes have a public IP directly attached. Both node 1 and server 1 are sitting behind different firewalls. We've not set up any port forwarding. How does it work? There is a technique called the UDP hole punching that's used to establish direct communication between two devices on a network when they are both behind NAT. First, node 1 and server 1 connect to the root server that acts as a facilitator. Once the connection is established, the root server will know their public IPs. When node 1 wants to talk to server 1, it will send this information to the root server. Root server will send a message to both node 1 and server 1 and ask them to try communicating directly. In the message, it will provide public IP and port of the other node. Node 1 and server 1 will simultaneously send traffic towards each other external address and port received from the root server. Both NAT firewalls will create a mapping entry to allow the return traffic to go back. The traffic sent from the other node will use that temporary hole in the firewall to establish the connection. Timing is the key, so each firewall will interpret the other party's initialization packet as a reply in a two-way UDP connection. That's it. Once the connection is established, the nodes can talk to each other directly. 
If the UDP hole punching cannot be established, then the root server will rely packets back and forth. Another interesting zero-tier property is auto-optimization. I've told you that node 1 and server 1 are part of different networks and sit behind different firewalls. That's true. However, I have an interconnect between those two firewalls that's disabled at the moment. Let me enable it. Let's wait a bit. Do you see that? Latency went down from 22 milliseconds to 2 milliseconds. We are going via the interlink connection and not over the internet. In other words, Zero Tier optimized the network path and formed a new direct connection. That's it for today. In future videos, I will show you how to set up your own root server, uh, those are called moons, and how to set up your own controller. We'll also talk about IPv6, injecting routes that will allow you to bridge two networks behind NAT or send all traffic via tunnel. We'll look into a very nice stateless firewall called flow rules that filters traffic. Zero tier is a fantastic technology. I encourage you to try it. Also, let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions. If you enjoyed this video, consider hitting that thumbs up button and subscribing for more interesting content.